running up the score. Jerry. He just sucks. He's not good. <laughs> let's, just, let's just put it out on the table. He's not a good quarterback. Oh, way to join a team that already won a title. You know, Ben is unique. These guys are unique. They're championship runs. I mean, this one's unique. Let's hope some people still get thrown at and, you know, get hit in baseball. Keep, keep it in there, right? Yeah. I, can't take, I can't take this guy serious right now. I dare you to watch it and tweet us. Tell us, oh, you know what? This is a hell of a sport. Where's, Where's this been all my life? The New York Jets need to, you know what they need to do with their second round pick? They need to just start taking it and lighting it up on fire. Man, where's, where's that quarter? Let me look at that the- one more time. <laughs> this is Running Up the Score. And it starts now. All right, it's time to run up the score. Running up the score with Jerry Napoleonello. 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. Brought to you by Yell 5 Sports app. We are live from the CSB studios in Westbury, New York on Zeno Live. Once again, there's no Anthony here. Um, we were hoping to get one, uh, get him in here uh, this week, but he couldn't make it this week. But um, next, I... I I'm hoping to do it regularly because we were talking about how, you know, uh, me and Anthony were probably going to do it together every other week. Um, it's a long drive for him and, you know, whatnot. But I think we might start doing a, um, I guess, kind of like a simulcast. Like you'll see him, um, you know, he'll be doing it from his house. I'll be doing it from here. And then eventually I'll be doing it from my house as well. Um, so hopefully we can bring him back, uh, for the next couple of weeks and so on after that. Um, we're not live on Periscope and, uh, I'm not even live really, uh, uh, technically I'm not even live on, on Xeno live right now. Um, it kind of, the times for the show kind of changed. So, uh, I kind of got handcuffed. So, you know, there's no, uh, basically nothing's live. So this is, uh, this is actually a podcast now. Uh, you know, usually I turn a live show into a podcast later on. Um, but this time I'm starting off as a podcast. So, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, I'm really trying to get this, um, this show pushed along. Um, Yelfi, the the sports app, I spoke to, um, you know, the head over there. Uh, they said that they're they're doing so well right now that, um, you know, they had to bring on other people and and stuff like that to to accommodate for the amount of people that are using the app. So that's that's great. On that end, um, I'm hoping, you know, for nothing but the best for uh, Yell 5 Sports app, you know, and hopefully we can keep this partnership going on um, down the road. Um, But, you know, we have so much to get to because I I haven't been here uh, in a couple of weeks, really. Um, We've been, I mean, me and Anthony have been on you know, totally different schedules. Um, you know, it's been rough trying to get in here. Um, that's why I'm trying to get something in my house so that I can really, you know, and make it easier. Cause then I could do it later. You know, usually here, uh, in this studio, they really close at like seven ish. So, you know, I usually try to get the last spot because you know Anthony works I work you know it it all depends on on the timing you know Kevin worked as well so I'm hoping you know once if I can get it to my house all three of us might be able to do the show um but again uh you know I I missed a a bunch of things Memorial Day I hope everybody had a, a uh a good Memorial Day um you know, it's basically the summer now. Uh, you know, this weather has been crazy. I have to say that. I mean, you know, one day it's 90 and then the next day it's 68. Like yesterday, yesterday was kind of cold in New York. It was pretty cold in New York. Uh, you know, the other day, you know, we thought it was going to, it was supposed to rain. Next thing you know, it's 92. 
you know, it's been it's been crazy. And, you know, I've been working a lot lately. You know, I work, um, you know, for TV shows and, and movies and stuff like that um, as part of the crew um, for those types of things. You know, a show that I worked on just aired uh, their first episode, the pilot episode on Sunday. Uh, it's called Succession on HBO. Check that out, 10 o'clock uh, every Sunday. Uh, I worked on Ray Donovan lately. I, I was working on this uh this other um, TV show, The Sinner, uh, they're in season two as well. So, uh, you know, go check those out. Remember that I, I worked on them. And, uh, you know, if that, uh, you know, coffee cup is on the table, you know who did it. Um, but there's so much to get to now because, you know, like I said, I haven't been here in a while. So there was things that I wanted to touch on here and there. Um, you know, if when it comes down to not coming into the studio and, and not putting down a show every week, you know, if I miss a week here and there, I try to give some of my insight that I would have said on the show. I try to use it on, on Twitter. So uh, go follow us on Twitter at RUTS Sports. Um, you can follow us on Instagram as well. You know, there's going to be a lot of um, different, you know, um, pictures that I, I, I think I'm going to start doing. You know, I finally got Photoshop, so, uh, you know, I love messing around with that kind of stuff. Um, so, de- you know, definitely go follow on both Instagram and Twitter. You know, send us questions, send us topics, whatever it is. You know, um, I said that to uh, the guy from Yelfi as well. Um, you know, send us some of the fans over there. You know, the people that are, you know, that like watching sports also like to argue sports. I mean, that's what sports is all about. It's arguing sports. Nobody, you know, not many people are going to sit there and you're you're not really going to agree on a lot of things when it comes to sports and that's what makes sports radio and sports talk so great i mean we're sitting here it's like you know two guys sitting here just you know having a regular conversation about sports you know i'm i'm going to give you my opinion and if you don't like my opinion i want you to come back at me and let me know that you don't like it and you give me your opinion and i'll tell you that i don't like it so, you know, just keep going back and forth. That's what I that's what I love about sports radio. So, you know, follow on Twitter, RUTS Sports, follow on Instagram, RUTS Sports. Call in 605-562-7085, press 5 to be heard live. You know, topics, questions, uh you want to shout out whatever it is. Uh I'm going to be having uh I'm going to be starting this it's kind of like a campaign kind of thing. Um so Basically, I'm going to start selling shirts, you know, for the show. Um, you know, I have to kind of sell like five uh, by a certain date so that I can finally, you know, continue to sell uh, the rest of the shirts. So, uh, you know, when you do see that, you'll see it on, on Twitter. You'll see it on Instagram. Um, when I do finally push those along, um, buy something, please buy something. I, I You know, I, I'm only... I'm doing, you know, I'm making it trying to, I'm trying to make them look nice that people would want to wear them. Um, So, you know, represent uh, running up the score. So, as I said, we had a lot to get to today. Um, Obviously not going to get to everything. There's some topics that I can bring up next week, so I'll do that um, with Anthony so I can get his opinion on, on some things as well. But, I mean, we might as well start off with the playoffs. Um, we have both finals here, the NBA finals, the Stanley Cup finals. And, boy, oh, boy, have they been good. Um, you know, we're through two games in the NBA finals. And controversy is, I mean, not even the word to explain how this – first two games of this of these finals have gone um I said that you know if Cleveland ended up playing uh, the Warriors that the Warriors would probably mop the floor with them and would probably sweep 
I'm still on that track. Maybe not mopping the floor with them. I mean, last game they probably they, they basically mopped the floor with them because um, you know the fourth quarter came around. Steph Curry really stepped up. I mean, 16 points in the fourth quarter in game two, uh, making acrobatic circus shots. Um, it you know broke a record for the most threes in a, in a finals game with nine. They win 20, uh, 122 to 103 in game two. You know, this, uh, when it comes down to the four-minute mark and the Cleveland Cavaliers are emptying the bench, that's when you know it's bad. Um, game one was the talk. I mean, everybody are still, everybody's still talking about game one. So it came down to George Hill shooting two. From the free throw line, I think it was like 30-something seconds left. or, or No, I, I think it was even less. And all George Hill had to do was make two, and they have the lead. He makes the first one. It's a tie game. The second one clangs off of the rim. J.R. Smith grabs the rebound. Now, usually for someone that's using their brain, they put it either back up, call a timeout, whatever. But no, he runs out the clock. So now they finally come out with um, footage of LeBron James and J.R. Smith and George Hill on the bench. And at some point in that video, now LeBron James is not saying a thing on the bench. Then it gets to a point where uh, Ty Lue is walking to the bench to talk to the team, setting them up for overtime. So you see LeBron say, we had no timeouts, like, you know, as a question. And obviously Ty Lue tells him, yeah, we did have timeouts. And you can see he's visibly upset, like visibly upset. And I don't blame him. I mean, I've heard some people say that uh, that's a problem for for LeBron James, you know, what he did um, at that point. I don't think so. I think the problem was after the game in the press conference, and I'll get to that in a second, but you can see he's visibly upset. And by all means, he should be. That was a boneheaded play by J.R. Smith. How do you not know what the score is? It is the NBA Finals. It is game one, and you are a... uh, such a huge underdog in this finals matchup. And you are about to steal game one on the road if you just knew what the score was. Now, by all means, if he put the ball up right away, missed the shot, then that's, you know, that's another story. But now... That he walked out the clock. And then they end up getting they end up losing the game eventually in overtime by 10. Now, don't get me wrong. The game was not over with J.R. Smith running out the clock. They still had a whole overtime to win the game. So I'm not, you know, I'm not blaming this whole loss on J.R. Smith. I'm not blaming this whole loss on the refs. They still had a chance to win in overtime. But they didn't. And the whole block and charge kind of thing, it was a block. Let's be serious. Come on. So, you know, I I just, you can't put it all on J.R. Smith, but it was a boneheaded play. And it is uh, upsetting as a, a, you know, if you're a Cavs fan or a Cavaliers player, as in LeBron. Um, but I didn't have a problem with him being visibly upset on the bench because that's, you know, you understand that. It's, you know, you're in the NBA now. You're in the NBA Finals. How do you not know what the score is? So moving on from that, then you go into the, the, the press conference. And LeBron's talking, yeah, they are stupid questions. But I mean, in reality, if you really sit back and listen to the press conferences, not many people do. But, uh, you know, unfortunately 
For me, you know, working at Sirius XM and working in the sports newsroom, that's stuff that we have to do. Yeah, they, you know, if the game's over, the game's over, yeah. You know, other people, they just, shut, they just turn off the game. You put on the next channel. You put on, you know, put on a movie or whatever. I have to sit there and put the audio of the press conference into the system, and then I have to cut it up. So I'm constantly listening to press conferences. You cannot tell me that in these press conferences that they are good questions. They are terrible questions. They are annoying questions. They are stupid questions. And I understand why you would get, you know, upset about that. But you cannot walk off. I don't care who you are. And the fact that we still rip Cam Newton for walking off after losing in the Super Bowl because he got dumb questions. Why, are we, why is this a double standard now? Why are we saying, oh, LeBron James is just upset he's been carrying this team? You know, and, and it's just, they're, they're just stupid questions that he's, that he's got to answer. But then when it comes down to Cam Newton, oh, well, he's being childish. He's a sore loser. He's this, he's that. But why are we commending LeBron James? Why aren't we ripping LeBron James? Because he's LeBron James? That's ridiculous. I think that whole thing is stupid. I think we should be ripping LeBron James right now for walking off. And then Tristan Thompson does the same thing in game two. He walks off. And I know this is not a press conference. It's not, you know, he's not at the the podium. It was basically a scrum in the locker room. And they were asking him, basically, do you feel helpless when, when Steph Curry is playing the way that he was playing in game two? And that is, a, that is actually a good question because the amount of shots, the, the, the kind of shots, the, the toughness of the shots that, that Steph Curry was making, you have to feel helpless. So the fact that he was offended by that question uh, and he walked off from that, first of all, you're Tristan Thompson. Who are you to walk off? Cam Newton, LeBron James, yeah, you're the top player on those two teams. It's understandable. You're doing what you got to do to help your team win. You're putting the team on your back. So when you get that point, you get to that point where it didn't happen, it didn't work, and you're getting a question that's dumb, and you walk off, I understand it. But don't rip one from the other. Now, on the other hand, Tristan Thompson, you're a nobody. Let's be serious. You are a nobody, and you have no right to walk away from that, that, you know, that post-scrum or whatever you want to call it. That is a good question. Did you feel helpless with Steph Curry making the shots that he was making? That is a good question. And I understand it. So we got game three. Now, now the other thing is with this, with the finals. So we had game one was, I believe, we had game two was Monday. Game one was probably Friday, I want to say. Um, let's see. I don't like this whole, you know, space in between these games. Now, game one was, I can't find it, but the fact that we're, we're having one or two days in between these games is ridiculous. I think it might have been Thursday, and then the next game was Sunday. How does that happen? How do we have game one and then game two three days later? They're in the same... It's not a travel day. 
So now we got game three, Wednesday. It's not even tonight. It's Wednesday. And then we got game four on Friday. So this whole gap thing with the NBA is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We are four games through the Stanley Cup Finals. They basically started at the same time, or they should have started at the same time because they both the conference finals were both at the end at the same time. So that's that's my quick rant about the, the scheduling things. But you know, this losing the finals again tarnish some of LeBron's legacy. Because now I believe it would be six losses. Or, you know, something like that. Yeah, it would be because this, this is his ninth appearance, and he's won three. Yeah, so it would be six losses in the finals. Now, does that tarnish some of his legacy? And I, and I know that you're going to tell me I'm a hater, and you know that I'm a LeBron hater. I am. I'm glad to say it. I will say it. I am a LeBron hater. So yes, losing again in the finals will tarnish his his legacy. Absolutely. And was there a difference if he would have lost in the conference finals to the uh, the NBA finals? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Um, but when you really look at this series, now, is there a difference between losing, a, a, you know, via a sweep, a gentleman's sweep? For those of you that don't know what a gentleman's sweep is, it's when the team wins one game and then ends up losing the next and they lose the series 4-1. Or going 6 or 7. I think it would help his legacy a little bit more if he went 6 or 7 games. If this is a sweep, it's going to be a rough one for LeBron. Now, all of these scenarios, I think, play into how this summer is going to be. So everybody knows that LeBron James could end up going somewhere else after this season. So you have the teams, you have the Rockets, you have the Sixers, you have the Lakers, you have the Cavaliers. Where does he go after the season? And it's basically the summer of LeBron. But where does he go? I think this whole Brian Colangelo thing with the Sixers and just the Sixers all together, I think he stays away from. Him and Ben Simmons are the same type of player. Ben Simmons is not anywhere close to what LeBron James is. I understand that. But they're the same type of player. They need the ball in their hands. Uh, They like to facilitate all of that. The Lakers are up there, I would have to say. Uh, you know, he lives in L.A. Um, you know, there's just – there's so much stuff in this series that that plays into a role that's going to happen in the, in the summer. Now, Cleveland, they get swept. I think it is a 99.9% chance that LeBron James is not coming back to Cleveland. This team that he has is – pretty brutal it is pretty brutal but the east is so goddamn easy I mean come on now so you know I I think Boston if they would have had Kyrie or Hayward I think they would have beat Cleveland um but yeah I, I I think a sweep and a gentleman sweep I think will will hurt his, uh, you know, his legacy a little bit. But now talking about, a, a, you know, a legacy that's, that's actually going to be going up here uh, on the ice, Alex Ovechkin. I mean, the narrative for the Washington Capitals is basically the same as the baseball team, Washington Nationals, as they call them, the Washington Crashnals. The Washington Capitals... Were, it was almost a lock that they were never going to get to this point. And right now, the Washington Nationals are one game away from winning the Stanley Cup. Alex Ovechkin has been playing his ass off. He's been playing 
wonderfully in every single series this playoffs. And that's always been a knock on him, that he didn't play well in the playoffs or, you know, he never got to that Stanley Cup. He never won that Stanley Cup. That's the difference between him and, Stan- and Sidney Crosby. I understand that. First of all, Sidney Crosby has had unreal teams. Uh, and don't get me wrong, the Capitals have had r- unreal teams too. They've been one seeds that they just totally crashed uh, in the playoffs. I understand that. But, I mean, Sidney Crosby had had like other level type teams. Um, but also the Vegas Golden Knights, I mean, their first season, making it to the Stanley Cup Finals. You know, a lot of people say the reason why they got so good was because usually when there's an expansion draft, there's at least two teams. So these players are split into two teams. They're getting, this year, like this past you know, offseason, they got all these players to themselves. So, you know, I think they've been playing unbelievably um, I think having hockey in Vegas now is unreal. I think, it, you know, the way that the city is, is taking in the Golden Knights is, is amazing. Um, they have such a bright future, really. Um, you know, and do I think that... This would have been bad for hockey if they would have won the Stanley Cup. I don't think so. I think it's actually good for hockey. I mean, to see a team like that, you know, people people are rooting for the Golden Knights. You know, teams that, you know, fans of teams that, you know, did not make it or did make it to the playoffs and lost. You know, people are rooting for the Golden Knights. Yeah, I was rooting for the Golden Knights at first, but then then Alex Ovechkin got into the Stanley Cup, and I, I think he deserves it. He deserves it. He's been a top player his whole career, uh, you know, and he's always had that knock towards him that he's no Sidney Crosby because he's never won a cup, and I think this is finally the time that Alex Ovechkin will win the cup, and he will help his legacy. He's a Hall of Fame hockey player. We already know that. He is a, you know, an all-time, you know, great scorer. So I think this is, this is something that hockey needs. I think hockey needs the Capitals to win this. Um, just to see Alex Ovechkin, one of the top players, if not the top player. Um, you know, everybody argues that, you know, Sidney Crosby, whatever. You know, and the young talent now coming up in hockey is unreal too. Um, but the conference finals, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, the Knights, and everybody knows, you don't touch the conference finals trophy. You don't. That is the superstition of hockey. You do not touch the conference finals trophy. The Golden Knights touched it. The Golden Knights walked it around the ice. So Dave England, you know, he kind of just, he was like, oh, superstition, screw that. Let's pick this bad boy up and walk it around the ice. Now, do I think that's the problem? That they're losing 3-1 right now? I don't know. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. But, I mean, just this series has been great. Uh, I I mean, can we get enough of Doc Emmerich? I mean, come on. This guy is the best broadcaster in all of sports. I don't care what anybody says. Anybody could fight me on that. Doc Emmerich is the best broadcaster in sports. The best. The way that he calls hockey games. Now, now listen. This is how you know he's the best. Hockey, out of all, at least the four major sports, hockey is most definitely the hardest sport to announce. It's the hardest sport to do play-by-play. All right, because with baseball. Baseball... Very cut and dry. Um, you know, the, the one thing that you need for baseball, you need to fill dead air. That's the biggest thing with baseball. You need to fill dead air. So if you're a good um, improv-type person, 
Baseball is perfect for you. Football, you know, you, you basically, you have the same players in the spots that they're supposed to be. So you have your quarterback, you have your wide receivers, you have your running back. We already know who they are. When you look at hockey, hockey is so fast, so nonstop. You have four or five lines of different players. Then you got three or four lines of defensemen. It is so fast, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the fact that he basically, and the way that I describe Doc Emmerich to people, you can sit there watching a hockey game and then close your eyes and just listen to Doc Emmerich and you can picture exactly where they are on the ice, who has the puck, what is he doing with the puck, is he about to shoot the puck, is he, you know, does he have his back to the net, whatever it is. You can literally close your eyes and see what he's telling you. He is the perfect radio play-by-play. He is the perfect TV play-by-play. He is the perfect broadcasting person in all of sports. I love listening to that guy. I love it. So when I get back from the break... um, you know, we had a little issue uh, in the Yankee game uh, with John Carlos Stanton. Uh, brought back bad memories for him, and he uh, showed it up. Uh, you know, and then I want to kind of break off of that to another incident and then kind of go to a broad range of uh, how I feel about this one topic in baseball. Uh, then, you know, we'll get into. Um, you know, some other things like, um, you know, Mark Desher's comments on Robinson Cano. The Islanders finally get a GM. Uh, we got some horse racing this weekend in uh, on Long Island, Belmont, about five minutes from my house. Uh, so I want to get into that. Johnny Manziel signed with the team. NFL? I don't know. Um, so we'll get into all of that when we get back. Um, you're listening to Running Up the Score. All Noise Radio, powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. All Noise Radio is an internet radio station that's fully produced by graduates of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. From modern rock to old school hip hop, country to classical, news, talk, sports, and more. It's the noise you can't ignore. Log on to allnoiseradio.com. Fire up the station find out more about your favorite jocks get the latest csb news and more plus you can take all noise radio with you on the go for free just download the live 365 app to your iphone ipod touch or blackberry and search all noise radio check out tomorrow's broadcasters today at allnoiseradio.com powered by the connecticut school of broadcasting Hey, this is Jerry Napoleonello, host of Running Up the Score. We are live once every week at 7 p.m. Eastern, where we hit on all the top headlines in the world of sports. You can also find us on Stitcher, iTunes, and those of you that like the visual aspect, check us out on YouTube. Running Up the Score, we run up the score on sports radio. Cyberstation USA is the future of radio. Get your business into the online future at the world's largest internet radio station. From banner placement on our homepage to any of our broadcaster stages, commercials on our video player, audio spots on any of our shows, or at the beginning of any of our on-demand broadcasts. Cyberstation USA offers competitive rates with a worldwide reach, a fully integrated one-stop shop social media broadcast platform. For more information, please contact our sales department at Cameo at Cyberstation USA. Now back to running up the score. Here's Jerry. 
All right, first call in at 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. You can also follow and tweet us at RUTS Sports as well as follow us on Instagram at RUTS Sports. Check out our website, www.rutsports.weebly.com. So uh, we had some kind of breaking news. I, I mean, at least it's breaking news to me. Um you know, Dave Gettleman, who just recently was hired by the New York Giants, um, you know, they I don't know if it just came out that he has lymphoma or that they came out with that, you know, previously. And now they're saying that he's going to be uh, going through treatment for that. But, uh, you know, the the news came out that, you know, he's going to be starting treatment for lymphoma Um and that he uh, he doesn't intend to step down, um, so that's that's huge for the for the Giants and huge for Dave Gettleman too. That he feels that he can go through with that um, while battling lymphoma. So you know, prayers uh, to Dave Gettleman um, and his family uh, through this time. You know it. <clears throat> As much as I hate the Giants, I, I would never wish anything, uh, you know, bad upon, um, you know, any of their players like that or, or you know, personnel or whatever. Um, so prayers to uh, Dave Gettleman on a uh, hopefully, a, uh, you know, getting through the treatment and, uh, you know, coming out on top. Um, so, you know, moving on, you know, we had also the whole, you know, Trump um, – banning or you know taking away the invite of the uh the philadelphia eagles i'm not going to get into it um there's so many people talking about it i don't like getting into politics you know i don't care what anybody says you know it's something that you should do no i don't care i don't care i'm not getting into politics it's only going to piss people off um you know and i you know I just you know, go like at work. You know, uh, you know, we're at, we're at work, and this one guy, you know, he's talking about like politics and stuff like that, and he likes politics. I understand that, and I just told him. I just pulled him to the side. I was like, "Listen, you know, if just advice, don't talk about politics. Politics is something that nobody ever is going to agree uh, agree on." Nobody is ever, you know, going to be like, oh, you know what? I know what you're saying. That That's true. Yeah, no, it doesn't work like that. People are so thick-headed when it comes to politics that, you know, they just – it just starts problems. So I'm not going to get into it. I don't agree with the, the Eagles not going to the White House. Um you know, so that's all I'm going to say. I, I that's just That's just how I feel. I'm not getting into it. So, moving on, baseball, okay? So, the Yankees are playing well. Um, they're still in second behind the Red Sox. Uh, it's going to be a, a very, very um, good race this year with the Yankees and the Red Sox. And then, you, you know, you throw in teams. Um, you throw in some other teams that, you know, are just going to be – there as well you know the Houston Astros if not will be on top um you know the Cleveland Indians they, like like I was saying the AL is going to be such a good playoffs um that I'm excited for the playoffs in, in baseball I know we're not even at the all-star break I understand that I'll get into the all-star uh break as well but you know going into some other things you know we had the Yankee game uh yesterday they played a doubleheader, day-night doubleheader against the Detroit Tigers. Um, the Yankees have a lot of games that they have to make up. They have a bunch of uh, doubleheaders coming up. But we had the, the first game, or actually it was the second game. Mike Fires, pitcher for Detroit, used to pitch for Milwaukee. Um, and if you notice with uh, Giancarlo Stanton, he wears... It, like it, it's kind of like the new thing now you, you're seeing all the young players coming up with it it's uh you know a face protector that attaches to the helmet so you see that on, on Giancarlo Stanton um the thing the reason that he's wearing that is because of Mike Fires. 
Mike Farias hit him in the mouth while he was with Mil- Milwaukee and, and Stanton was with uh, the Miami Marlins. I think it was two years ago. I think it might have been 2016. Uh, so pitch comes up and in, hits Stanton. Stanton didn't like it. It basically was a flashback to him getting hit in the mouth, and it just it just happens to be Mike Fires. So next at bat, Fires pitching to to Stanton, and Stanton launches a 456 foot home run. He walks a little bit, tosses the bat, nice little bat flip, comes back around, steps on home, points to Mike Fires. So Mike Fires didn't like that, um, you know, and you'll hear what he had to say after. But uh, this is what, um, you know, Stanton had to say in the, the post-game scrum, and this is what Mike Fires had to say as well. It'll be simultaneously. Well, not simultaneously. It'll be continuously after each other. Um, so this is what they, they both had to say. When Fires hit you, does that just spark old memories for you? Well, yeah, if it's going to come up and in like that, then, yeah, it does. Uh, wasn't trying to hit me in that situation, but um, still, with, with the history like it, what happened, um, you know, don't hit me. Is there any better revenge than a 456-foot homer? Um, it was nice. Uh, win would be better, but, um, oh, well. Did you get your yomo pad there? Uh, forearm. Forearm? Yeah. Did you have thoughts of actually going to the mound, or you you were just walking and kind of you just wanted to get a couple of things off your chest? Just say what you need to say, and you know, uh, get to the next guy. Hopefully, um, we can get get some runs going, and you know, not stir anything up that's not trying to help us win. At the end of the day. Point. Yeah, I did. Why? Why not? <laughs> Is that one of your better bat flips of all time? Sure. Do you expect you know, if you do face him again? It doesn't matter. We'll get there when we get there, and when we are there, it won't matter either. So. What was what was the message in the point? Get the point. You were surprised by the exchange, weren't you? <laughs> um. Not really surprised. I mean, like I said, I, I understand the history, and I understand that it was a, a bad moment for him a while ago. So, you know, I understand he's upset, but I just think um, the way he handled it after is, I don't know, a little childish. Uh, are you talking the childish part, like pointing to you after the home run or before when you just, hit him? I don't know. Just, yeah, I mean, getting his revenge and, you know, throwing his bat and pointing, I mean... <laughs> It's, that's not part of this game. I mean, yeah, you're supposed to have fun, but I mean, I think that's kind of childish. But I understand he was happy at that point, and he got me back, but I mean, whatever. Would you have liked to face him again if, if you could have, if the game would have allowed it? Yeah, I mean, um, we go to New York too, so I might have to pitch there. So um, <laughs> yeah, I still got to gotta pitch to him just like I pitched to everybody else. So, I mean, um, I might have to face him again. So... He says it's childish. This is what Fire said. He said it was childish. Um, so, like, my question was, pimping home runs and showing excitement on the mound, is it good or bad for baseball? Now, I also had an example of something that happened a couple of weeks ago between the Reds and the Cubs. Now, it was the opposite. Uh, Javi Baez was struck out by, um, I forget who it was. He used to play for, I want to say, Stony Brook or St. John's. It was a Long Island or city-type um, school, but I forget who it was. Um, but he struck out Javi Baez and gave him a nice little, you know, like scream kind of thing uh, towards him. That started a whole little scuffle. So to me, and, I, and I'm always about this kind of stuff. I was about Jose Batista tossing the bat the way he did. I was about Jabba Chamberlain showing his excitement on the mound. I'm about, you know, uh, a whole bunch of other guys. I think, uh, you know, who else, who else, you know, does stuff like that? Um, 
you have uh, you have the the, the one pitcher. Um, why am I drawing a blank now? Um, he does the arrow, everything. You know th- th- that that's like what are you supposed to be a robot? Like you're not supposed to show any kind of excitement towards uh, you know doing something good in the sport. I mean, all these players in, in uh, you know in football. They get a sack, they dance. They deflect a pass, they dance. They score a touchdown, they dance. They get a first down, a two-yard first down, they dance. No one says anything about that. I understand. Now, I, like, I love it, but I hate it when you're down. That I understand. But when it comes to, you know, a, a John Carlos Stanton part, yeah, they were down. But the way it was, I I agreed with it. I liked it. That you're just showing how passionate you are about it. And not one guy is gonna take that away. You know, if you wanna hit me, go ahead and hit me. But the next time I face you, I'm gonna take you deep. And that's what he did. And you know what? I'm a, I'm down with you know how he he showed his excitement how he you know he pimped that home run, um, the point was even better I thought I thought that's just like a you know a, a great thing I, I listen I'm all for and and like you can even hear it in the intro me and Tom agreed with it as well, well I, I'm for benches clearing I'm for brawls I'm, I'm for pimping home runs I'm for showing excitement on the mound I mean every everything you know showing your excitement just shows your passion for the sport just shows your passion for your team just shows your passion for winning that's what you that's what you want out of a team you know when you're a fan of a team that's what you want you want your players to be excited you want your players to show that kind of excitement so I'm for all this stuff do I think it was childish absolutely not if you don't want him to to pimp the home run if you don't want him to to point at you strike him out get him out that's on you you gave up the home run you cannot you know, complain if you're the one giving up the home run. If you're the one striking out that the pitcher is, is jumping up and down. That's your fault. That's not his fault. He's doing what he's got to do. That's your fault for not doing what you got to do. So don't come out and say, oh, that's childish. Oh, oh, you know, that it's, it's bad for baseball. No, 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 no. It's good for baseball. You know what? If you don't want to see it, don't let it happen. So this, I'm all about this kind of stuff. I'm all about stare downs. I'm all about brawls. I'm all about pimping home runs. I'm all about showing excitement on the mound. I'm all about that stuff. So in the next couple of weeks... Um, well, you know, we'll probably even start it next week. We're going to start this, uh, you know, new segment where they got it wrong. Um, you know, and it's basically going to be us finding clips from the week before or the week of, uh, of, you know, sports radio, sports TV, um, all these hosts or whatever saying stuff that we don't agree with. And we'll give you the reason why we don't agree with it. So, you know, I haven't come up with a name for this segment yet, but you're going to see that. Um, and if you have any ideas, if you, you heard something outrageous from a host or, a, you know, a radio host or a TV host or whatever, and you think that we would disagree with it, send it to me on, on Twitter, send it to me on Facebook, send it to me uh, on Instagram, whatever it is. Um, tag me in it if you see the video, whatever it is. I You know, I, that's what I want. You know, I want to um, I want to get as much as we can, you know, in weeks, and we'll we'll just you know rip them apart. That's that's the best part of it. We'll just rip them apart. Um, so I wanted to get into a little bit of this. Um, you know, I'm not a big not a big horse racing fan kind of thing. Uh, you know, working at Sirius, now I go through the the three major races. You know, with the Preakness, the Kentucky Derby, and the Belmont Stakes. 
you know, we cut those, you know, those races and stuff like that. So we have the, the, uh, last leg of the triple crown Belmont stakes, um, you know, right on long Island, two minutes from my house. Um, you know, we have justify, I think it's justify, right? Yeah. Um, going for the triple crown here. Now, we obviously saw the Triple Crown a couple of years ago with American Pharaoh. Does this, and before American Pharaoh, we had, I mean, the last one was years and years and years before. <clears throat> so, do we, does, does justify going for the Triple Crown now? Does it mean as much than when American Pharaoh was going for the Triple Crown. I feel like it doesn't. Uh, you know, for some reason, you know, I think, you know, winning the Triple Crown is, is huge um, for horse racing. But is it as big now? Because we already saw it a couple of years ago. So, and I mean, that's the, that's the question that I'm asking because I'm sitting here and I feel like it doesn't. I feel like it's not as big as it was for American Pharaoh. I feel like everybody wanted to see it happen so bad. We got to see it with American Pharaoh, and now it's like, all right, we got to see it. That's it. You know, I, and don't get me wrong, we're probably going to have it just as much, you know, people than we did, you know, at that time with American Pharaoh. Um, you know, but I, you know, I, I just, I feel like it's not as big now because of American Pharaoh. Um, so speaking of Belmont, the New York Islanders who will make their home in Belmont uh, in a couple of years, they finally hired a real GM, and his name is not Garth Snow. His name is Lou Lamorello. Used to be the GM for the the Devils, um, Leafs, you know, a bunch of other teams. Uh, so it's huge. The Islanders finally made a smart move. Hiring Lou Lamorello because not only do you finally bring in a real GM, but now you can entice, you know, different people, different players to come in to play for the Islanders. So not only are they getting in their new home, they're getting a new GM that is known for, you know, winning and, and you know, just tradition and, and, you know, whatever. That That's that's what Lou Lamorello brings to the Islanders. And you're seeing that now, you know, I, I've, I've read uh, where John Tavares, because now going into this offseason, that's where it, the problem was. But, you know, everybody thought, you know, the question was, is, is John Tavares going to end up coming back to the Islanders or is he gone? And if he's gone, the Islanders are done. So they need John Tavares f to go into this new home in Belmont, to bring people to the ice, to bring people to the arena, to watch the Islanders. And Lou Lamorello is that guy to bring John Tavares back, to bring other top players into this team, to bring this team back to the 80s Islanders. And the first thing is signing John Tavares. So now I was reading different articles on it, and NHL executives are saying that they're worried that John Tavares is not even going to touch free agency because even talking to other teams, they're basically, you know, with the wording of, you know, if we're available, if we're available, if we were to, to sign somewhere else, you know, this, like that, those kind of words kind of made other teams, executives like, all right, you know, maybe he's not going to end up going anywhere. So Lou Lamorello was talking to the the agents of John Tavares way before he he was hired by the Islanders. So that's huge. Uh, hopefully there's no tampering or anything like that when it comes to that. Um, but that's huge. Um, supposedly he's spoken to the, uh, the representation of John Tavares for the last couple of weeks now, like almost every day. Uh, then you also have the other, uh, the other leg of this, 
Ilya Kovalchuk, who was on the Devils, signed a massive contract and then felt like going to Russia and playing Russia, he's coming back to the NHL. And before this whole Lou Lamorello thing, he was like, all right, well, they're gonna, he's going to sign with the Rangers. Now bringing in Lou Lamorello, who was the GM of the Devils when Kovalchuk was there, and Kovalchuk feels that Lou Lamorello kind of really helped the process to, to get him into Russia, who, uh, you know, was okay with the, the whole process and, you know, really made it an easy transition. He wants to kind of, you know, maybe get back with Lou Lamorello. And the Islanders now have the upper hand in signing Ilya Kovalchuk. I understand that he's 35, but if he comes to this team, other than John Tavares, he's the best player on their team. So this is huge. This is huge for the Islanders. This is huge for the Islander fans. This is huge for Long Island. I'm excited for it. Johnny Manziel signs with the team, but it's not in the NFL. He signed a two-year deal with the CFL. Uh, He played his first game the other day. I think 11 passes, 80 yards. Um, You know, did some scrambling and everything like that. He looked good. Um... You know, next week uh, I'll bring up this again, um, and I'll bring up you know his interview before and after with Dan Patrick. Now I've always said you know just even like just listening to the first interview uh, a couple of weeks ago that Johnny Manziel had with Dan Patrick before he signed, uh, and you just listen to some of the things. I even brought up a clip on here on this show uh, about basically him saying that the, if the Browns would have did their homework on Johnny Manziel, they would have known, you know, everything that would have happened. You know, sitting back and, you know, being an aspiring, you know, radio host, sports radio host, and to get an interview like that, that's got to make you feel amazing. I mean, to get somebody to talk like that to to get somebody to to bring up things that every other radio station in the United States is going to bring up on their show because Johnny Manziel is such a uh, you know polarizing player polarizing person really you know that people are going to play those clips that they heard on your show they're going to credit your show all through the United States I mean that's got to make you feel good and that's why Dan Patrick is one of the best to do it uh, you know, just what the, the interviews that he had with Johnny Mansell before and after signing with the CFL, I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's got to make you feel good. It really has to make you feel good. Um, how about the Mets? You know, talking about Johnny Mansell being a dumpster fire before, you know, finally getting his life turned around. The Mets are a dumpster fire. And no, I, I mean, I, like I literally mean dumpster fire. I mean, City Field was on fire. And between that and their injuries and even getting a fan giveaway wrong, I mean, the other day, how do you have a fan giveaway for Todd Frazier, a pullover, Todd Frazier? I mean, first of all, that's, that, I have to say that's a great giveaway. A pullover? I mean, who doesn't like pullovers? But how do you, how do you get that wrong? What did, what did they get wrong? I mean, the statement came out. They never really said what was wrong on the statement, but it kind of seems like they maybe spelled his name wrong or something. I mean, that they had to give them back. They, they didn't hand them out. They had to remake them by the manufacturer. First of all, that probably cost them money. Um, and, you know, just nothing's going right for the Mets right now. There, there is nothing going right. I mean, DeGrom is pitching lights out right now, and he's still losing games. He's giving up one run and still losing games. I mean, the other day... Now you look at it, and you look at the score, and it says 7-1. Then all of a sudden you look in the corner, and it said 14 innings. Now to get into to extra innings, obviously, you know, everyone's got to know this. You go into extra innings, the game is tied. That means they scored six runs in an inning. And they did. They scored six runs in the 14th inning. In a game that DeGrom pitched a one-run game. I think for eight innings. And they lost seven to one in 14 innings. The Mets are absolutely going to be sellers at the, at the trade deadline. And it's going to be amazing to see if they get rid of any of these pitchers. I mean, you look at it, you got Syndergaard hurt. 
You got, you know, DeGrom spent a little time on the DL. You got Steven Matt spending time on the DL. You got uh, Yoannis Cespedes spending time on the DL. You know, they, I mean, it's just, it's brutal being a Mets fan. I, I, feel, I feel sorry for you. I, I'm so glad that I'm a Yankees fan. I am so glad that I'm a Yankees fan. I mean, what the Yankees have done is remarkable. What the Mets have done is not. It is such a joke of, a, of an organization. It is an absolute joke of an organization. And I feel bad for the fans. I mean, how could you be a fan of this team? I mean, I, like to be honest with you, if you were a Mets fan and you told me that you used to be a Mets fan and now you're a fan of a different team, I'd understand it. I, and you know, I'm not, I'm not all about you, you know, being a front runner or anything. Listen, you got to do what you got to do. If you don't want to be a Mets fan anymore, I understand it. And if you are a Mets fan and still a Mets fan, I, I, I mean, God bless you, I guess. I, I don't know. <clears throat> But, I mean, there's so much other stuff that we're going to get into, uh, especially next week. You know, the Rays using a reliever to start back-to-back games, we're going to get into that and how that, you know, if it's a good strategy or not. Uh, The All-Star game, you know, a lot of players are are coming up with um, some, you know, questions about it. Um, You know, then, you know, we had an NFL coach, uh, you know, using a a condiment. for strategy on telling if a player is a good player or not. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bring back Anthony next week. Uh, we're going to do a little uh, simulcast kind of thing. I just got to figure out how I'm going to get people to be able to see Anthony at the same time of the show. Because when it comes down to YouTube, that, that's fine. I, I can figure that out. But it's just getting, um, you know, the show – or, or to, to show him on Periscope or whatever. So we'll, we'll figure it out. I got a whole week to, to figure it out. But we'll be back next week talking sports once again. Uh, that will do it for Running Up the Score. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll be back next Monday, as I said, talking sports once again. You got any topics, questions, um, anything, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, at R-U-T-S Sports. Check out our website, www.rutsports.weebly.com. I am Jerry B. Breezy. Breezy. You've been listening to Running Up the Score. We run up the score on Sports Radio, 